In this lesson, I want to discuss some odds and ends. These are very short little topics, things that I usually stick into my lectures at uh, odd times when I have a few minutes left over. I have three things I want to talk about. I want to begin with the ternary operator. This is the only operator in C++ considered to have three operands. There is the syntax here, which is expression one, question mark, expression two, colon expression 3. So expression 1 is a C++ expression that can be evaluated to either true or false or a numerical value as always. Non-zero is true and zero is false of course. Expression 2 and expression 3 must be of the same type and these two are the candidates to be returned by this operator. So the way this works is the compiler will evaluate expression 1. If it's true, then expression 2 is what is returned by the operator. And if it is false, then expression 3 is what is returned. This is returned if true and returned if false. Okay, so let's uh, see how we might be able to use this. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here's an example from a program, the solution of a program that I assigned many years ago. The program was to calculate change and output that to the user. And I had my output statement looking something like the following. I had C out and num pennies was the variable holding the number of pennies to be output. So it was num pennies and then some space and pennies, something like this. Well, the problem was that if numpennies was zero, well, fine, then it came out zero pennies. But if it was one penny, then it would come out as one pennies. And that looked kind of silly. Of course, two pennies was fine, and etc. But this was a problem. It really should have been one penny. Well, one way to handle this is with a complicated if statement. But that seemed so cumbersome. And I solved the problem using the ternary operator. So I used it in my stream. I had C out num pennies and then quote P E and N and the ternary. So I tested is num pennies equal to one. And if so, I was going to return to be streamed the single letter string Y. Otherwise the three letter string I yes. So once again if num pennies was one then I got a Y and it would output one penny. Otherwise, it would output num pennies, zero, two, three, four, etc. pennies. I thought that was a very elegant solution to my problem and a lot less cumbersome than the if else. Okay, as a second example, suppose that I have three integer values declared, val one and num one, and then bigger. So I prompt for and read in two values. Now, I want to bring attention to the way that I've done this. Notice uh, my prompt is to prompt for two values, okay? And my CN statement is CN val1 num1. This is actually perfectly legal and works. It works so long as the user types in whatever the values are, four and six, and leaves white space between them. The problem is you can't be guaranteed of that. Incidentally, I should state what is white space. White space is the space, the new line character, and the tab. So if somebody enters an integer uh, space and then another integer and hits the enter button, everything's fine. But if they do anything other than that, then it can really mess things up. For instance, if they put a comma here, then you've got problems because that comma is not going to be ignored. It's going to be read in and it's going to break the program. So even though I've done this, I do not advocate you doing it. It's not a good idea. Okay, so I read in two values and I'm going to set bigger to be the larger of these two. And the way I do that, again, I could do it with an if statement, but I'm going to do it with a ternary. I'll ask the question, is val1 greater than num1? If it is, then I'm going to return val1 and otherwise I'm going to return 
num1. So bigger gets assigned the larger of the two values. And it doesn't really matter where I put the equality. I could put the equality here or not there. It doesn't really matter. Because if they're equal, then it doesn't matter which one is assigned to bigger. And then, of course, I got an output statement. The larger of your inputs is bigger. OK, moving right along. There are two ways that you can put the cursor at the beginning of the next line of output. You perhaps have seen the backslash in within quotes in your text. I don't think I've used it yet in this course. I almost always use the end line. In any case, these two ways, doing a backslash in within the quotes and the end line being streamed after your literal, whatever it might be, will seemingly do exactly the same thing. Puts the cursor at the beginning of the next line of output. So in this case, outputting hello puts the cursor right here. Are they the same? Actually, no. The backslash n, uh, technically, this is an escape sequence. And I'm going to talk about escape sequences as the third item in this bit of odds and ends. And ENDL endline is what's known as a manipulator. So what's the difference? Well, the backslash n does a line feed. All right, but it allows output to be buffered. That means that whatever's being output to the output device, the standard out, the monitor in this case, is sent to a buffering register where it sits for some time before the CPU sends that information out to the output device. The CPU can engage in other computation in the meantime and may run the entire rest of your program. You don't know. But when you, when you do an end line, the, this manipulator will not only send hello to the output buffer, but it will flush that buffer. It will send everything from that register out to the output device and before any other commands are executed by the CPU. Now, of course, this is really important. As I pointed out, when you're trying to find errors in your code due to a, an infinite loop, it's really important that all output go to the output device before anything else is executed. And this is why I tend to use endline more than the backslash n. OK, let's discuss escape sequences. The escape sequences are a pairing of characters, the backslash and then another character. The backslash escapes the usual or normal meaning of the second character. For instance, backslash r, well, an r is an r, but a backslash r escapes the meaning of r being an r. And what we have then is a carriage return. So the cursor moves to the beginning of the current line. Again, these are assumed held within the double quotes. Okay. Likewise, backslash n, that's the new line character. Not only does the cursor move to the beginning of the line, but it goes to the beginning of the next line. Backslash t is a tab. You've seen that in some of my output statements. It just moves the output of the cursor over a few spaces. Backslash a, that's the alert that rings a bell in your computer. And no, they have been disabled in the campus machine, so you needn't try ringing the bells in the machines on campus 100,000 times. Sorry, that won't work. Backslash, backslash, suppose you want to output a backslash. Backslash tick, backslash quote, backslash zero, that's the null character. And backslash b, that's actually a backspace. Let me give you another example of where this is handy. Suppose I write this output. See out, my dog says bark today. What's going to happen to this? Is it going to compile? Well, the answer is no. The compiler, when it runs through this cout statement, it sees this quote. And then when it sees this quote, it's going to see that that's a pairing of quotes. And it's going to expect the very next characters to be either the insertion operator or a semicolon. When it sees the B in the B-A-R-K, then it gets confused and wonders if that's maybe not a variable that you're trying to output and it should compile error. So how do you get around this problem? What you do 
and she put a backslash here. And that's going to escape the usual meaning of that double quote. Here, it's going to escape the meaning that it's closing this quote. And here, meaning it's not going to start a new quote to close that one. So that's escape sequences. And I think I've got a comprehensive list here. There may be others, but uh, I think the only ones that I usually use are the null, the tab, and the new line. And probably those are the ones that you'll ever use. We're going to use the null character when we get to null terminated character arrays. And uh, occasionally you'll use the tab and the new line. And uh, that's the end of the session for today.